our session or my session is on Joomla integrations. And um, my email address is me at sasha.us. So if you have any questions on um, the things that I'm going to present, then just email me. Um, well, I guess most of you don't know me because I'm not really actively participating in the Joomla community. I am a very interested bystander, but I would like to show you <coughs> how I got to Joomla. And I would like to show you something that maybe might be interesting for you. Um, personally, first a little bit about myself. Okay, sorry. Um, I was a core developer of PostNuke, if any of you ever heard of that. Very old software. Very bad, don't use it anymore. Um, it has forked to SQLA now, but um, the thing is, in the late 90s, I owned a community that I coded on my own with about 100,000 members. It was a dating site. And um, eventually, I realized it was too much for me as one person to um, proceed with that. So I was looking for a framework or something that I could use to um, get modules, components, and stuff like that. Um, at that time, I also studied applied computational linguistics. And um, our professor encouraged us to participate in open source communities. So that's what I did, and that's how I became involved with PostNuke. Um, later on, once PostNuke forked into Xoraya, um, I became one of the um, founding members of the Digital Development Foundation, which is pretty much the same as, or not the same, but similar to um, Open Source Matters for Joomla, but this is for Xoraya. <coughs> My interests in Joomla, uh, in, sorry, in PostNuke and Xoraya were, what is compatible with the GPL? How far does the GPL stretch? Where does it end? And how can you go about integrating third-party software? So, unfortunately, I didn't make any money with the um, PostNuke or Sequela or um, Soraya projects. So in 2000, I decided to found my own hosting company. I was involved with that. Uh, with the uh, PostNuke project. And so that's how EasyOS hosting came to life. EasyOS hosting means easy open source hosting. I participated in a couple of events and I met someone who oversaw the Planet. I don't know if you ever heard of the Planet Data Center. Um, community transactions that were built at that time, before the planet, or before EV1 servers was merged with the planet. Her name was Isabel Bang. And she had the vision of a cross-platform, completely integratable web application framework. She said that basically the open source movement doesn't go too far. It, it will never end up in the enterprise world unless it manages to integrate with, with each other. Unless you integrate Joomla, for example, with WordPress. Okay, this doesn't make too much sense because they're very, very comparable, but Joomla with an e-commerce application. Magento comes to mind. So right now, one of the reasons why I'm not that actively involved is I have a very active project that is going on. The due date is very soon. And I'll be a father. So, in case that you wonder if it's going to be a boy or a girl, it's going to be a Simpson. It looks like it anyway. So, but now on to the actual topic of our session, Joomla integrations. I'm going to show you 
an application. It's called WHMCS. And I'm going to show you, or I'm going to give you a little bit of input how this can be integrated into Joomla. After that, we are going to have a little partner, a uh, little partner group with three pairs about various um, integrations. For example, PHP BB. There are different approaches towards integrating Joomla and PHP BB. Or uh, one of them is, or the most popular that comes probably to mind is JFusion. If you're, are you familiar, familiar with JFusion yet? I guess not, so you're going to learn something new. And um, the other one is from Rocket Theme, the Rock Bridge, which integrates Joomla. And um, one of the th other things I have to mention, I am not affiliated with WHMCS. I'm not in any way working for them. And I'm not affiliated with Rocket Theme. I just picked these. It's really just something that I picked out of um, the many available solutions. So what is WHMCS? And why is it interesting for you? It is a billing system, but it is far more than that. It is also a support system. You can manage your clients, which might be interesting for you if you are a developer. It has its own shopping cart system. It is very mm, rudimental, but it works. It has a very high level of automation. I'll show you some examples. And it is developer friendly. So about the billing aspects. With WHMCS, you can create and basically automate the process of performing invoices or creating invoices. <coughs> you can set up invoice, in, invoices that are generated automatically every month on a recurring basis. You can create manual invoices and you can allow your customers to print the invoices either as um, from the HTML template or as a PDF, which is important for a lot of customers to keep track of everything. Um, or you can email the invoices to the customer. This is an invoice example. As you see, you have various additional options. Oh, oh, these things are all tabs. And um, this is from the admin interface. So you have all your available options, the things that you can do, always available in place. <laughs> and, and by the way, I had rearranged my presentation completely when I heard on Sunday that there's no internet. I was going to demo this, but then I drove back home, rearranged everything, took screenshots instead, and now we have internet again, so sorry about that. Um, so the invoices is one of the things it can do. But important for freelance developers is the ability to create quotes. You can create easily a quote or an estimate, and it can either be stored or sent directly to clients. And once you're done and the client has approved your quote, then you can, with the click, um, convert the quote to an invoice. So, for example, you have a new lead, you have a new client, and you don't have any information on him yet, then just select this. Then a little window will open, you can enter some details on the client, and then, um, you'll have the possibility to um, create the new client for your database. Then you have the quantities. You can enter whatever you um, please. You can say four hours of search engine optimization consulting, for example. 
and um, it will automatically keep track of everything else. It will keep track of the numbers. You don't have to calculate anything. You have customer nodes. These nodes are available or can be seen in the quote by the customer. And you have admin-only nodes. This is if you are working with several people on, on a quote, then you can leave comments there. It also comes with an automated payment processing. You can have PayPal subscriptions to check out, Google Checkout, Amazon, and over 50 other um, automated supported gateways, including the most common um, merchant gateways. Are there any questions on the support so far? So on to the billing, uh, no, on the billing, sorry. Um, so on to support. Um, it comes with a ticket system. I know there are open source ticket systems, but in this case, everything is going to be included in this one application. Clients can open tickets either from the web or by email. They send an email to support at yourdomain.com and the email is automatically piped into um, your ticket system so that you can view the ticket and do with it, with it whatever you want. <coughs> it has a basic, very basic spam filter, which works for keywords and um, blocks email addresses. And it has escalation rules. Um, I'll show you, and, and the knowledge base, I'll show you the escalation rules first. No, sorry, sorry, I'll show you the, the knowledge, but for knowledge base first. Um, the interesting thing about this is it comes with automatic suggestions. So you have your own knowledge base. How can I send you all my money? And your client opens the support window. He says, okay, the urgency is medium, and he is asking, how can I make payment? And at that point, through Ajax, it searches the knowledge base and it throws a couple of suggestions for the client. This helps tremendously to reduce support questions. Then it has escalation rules. So a client supports, uh, a client sends a support ticket and you create in the back end an escalation rule. You say, okay, if someone sends an email to support, the status is open and it's a high priority, then I'll keep him hanging for five minutes and after that I'll send an automatic email saying, thank you for contacting us, we, already, we are already looking into your issue. So this way you have the first contact with the client, you tell them or you show the client that someone is working on this. The client won't know that it's automated. But if you happen to be around, then sometimes it can make a big difference if you are answering in five minutes or in 10 minutes, at least in my business, in the hosting business. It also has support for a download system, which is also very slim and not too feature rich. Um, since it is a commercial product, you can also <coughs> expect that it has um, a product download, download so that only if someone buys a product, then this download will be downloadable. But there are a lot of Joomla options, so I'm not going to compete with that. Um, then the client management. The clients can view, edit, or update their personal data. They can add their own security question, which is something that um, Joomla is lacking. So, um, 
once this is integrated with Joomla, then you can just say, okay, I want to use their authentication scheme, and then really what they offer with the security question is offered to the customer if he loses his password. Are any of you um, directly involved with the web management of a Joomla project? As in web mastering? No? A little bit? How many of the support requests, if you happen to get any of those, are related to, I lost my password? And I don't have my email address. Zero. You wouldn't say so? Um, I, it's kind of the point where I accept the account up for them and then, uh, well, I, I have them go and register their account through the front end and, and set their own password to begin with. Okay. And then everything this helps too. I think maybe once I did get a question, I was like, oh, they said this link. Okay. Um, from our hosting support view, um, it is very, very common that. <laughs> But a lot of customers seem to change their emails. In our case, uh, since we have annual renewals within one year, a lot of people don't remember which email address it went to. Sometimes they forgot to set up the account. And then it is very helpful to, to have the security question. I personally would prefer if um, the client could ask his own security question. So that you really ask something that you know the answer to. Um, and it can manage the history, which is in case of you plan to work with corporate customers, then it is very important for you to have the uh, track of records. So the client can log in and he can see all his old invoices Um, or he can see his uh, previous payments, or he can see any emails that were exchanged between you and the customer. Again, from the hosting perspective, it is very important that you can tell them, I sent you this email, but for some reason it might have ended up in your spam folder or blocked by someone. It is also very nice in terms of um, being able to create multiple accounts for one entity. So for example, you have one customer, it happens to be Microsoft for example, and Microsoft has more than one person dealing with this project. So in this case, the person from Microsoft who logs in can set up sub-accounts and he can set permissions. Yes, so one master account can create multiple sub-accounts. This is going to be one of the most interesting aspects, I think, with Joomla 1.6 and the ACL, because there is a project that aims to integrate WHMCS with Joomla. And um, once they manage to get really the full integration then this will be very, very interesting to deal with corporate customers. Then it also has the option to have um, service management. So clients can view the old services they have ordered, they can do automatic upgrades, or they can order add-ons. They um, can also request, for example, cancellations. This is an example for the, for the emails that I mentioned. So they can log in and they, then they can see, okay, these are all the emails that I have sent to the system or the system has sent to me.
And the last aspect, the automation. You can create um, or you can set the system so that it, it creates services either upon the order, if you really think that you can give away your stuff immediately, or upon payment, or upon um, admin approval. Or you can set it so that um, only existing customers are able to automatically um, create an order and get it delivered to them immediately. It can set things so that accounts are suspended automatically when they're inactive and that they are reactivated immediately upon payment. You can also set an admin defined grace period of example, for example, 14 days and after 14 days, if there's still no payment, then the account gets suspended. Or if you want to be really strict, then you can terminate the account immediately. As I mentioned, customers can also um, upgrade on their own and they can handle the password resets. It also sends out reminders of overdue notices. And there's an example for the automatic um, option. So you can say, okay, I want the invoice to be created 14 days prior to the due date. And I want to send a first reminder seven days after that. And then a second and a third so that people won't forget about it. You can even add a late fee and you can say, okay, after 10, uh, after 10 days, um, people have to pay a $5 late fee or something like that. So I also mentioned it's developer friendly. And this is really the last point now. Do we have any developers in here? Okay. Okay, so this is the interesting po point for you. Um, it is modular. The service um, provisioning system allows you to um, automate um, different things upon either the activation or to hook into the, the system upon activation, upon the suspension of an account or upon the termination. Um, if you happen to be into the hosting business, then you can have a lot of different um, options for registrars, for um, other systems, really. Like anything is possible. A CDN, for example, could be set up automatically. So it also comes with um, over 50 gateway modules, but you can also build your own gateway module for that, or code your own admin modules, that works as well. It has an API, and um, the API allows you to trigger events within the WHMCS software from third-party apps. So for example, you can use Community Builder, and at the same time, when someone has um, indicated an interest into, I don't know, something in the form fields, um, you can create a trigger, and this trigger creates an automatic account creation in WHMCS. Or you can have custom order forms or generate tickets automatically. Finally, it also has action hooks, which means um, that from within WHMCS, if someone adds a new contact, then you can trigger an action in, th in a third-party application. And it has a lot of templates. Templates are available for the client area, for the admin area, and for the emails. The templates are basically smarty templates. Here's an example. Oops, no. 
an example of an email template that is manageable from the back end as well. And as you see, you have the, the smarty tags within the template. You can also do more advanced stuff, um, not just replace variables, but I don't know, any if else constructions or <coughs> something like that. Or if you want to list something that a person has ordered, then you can also add that. Okay, so this is WHMCS. It was originally created for cPanel. Are you familiar with cPanel? I guess a lot of you have at least once worked with that. So how do you get Joomla to integrate with cPanel? This was one of the questions I had at that time when I was working with that. It is possible, cPanel now has an API, and, um, but we were doing so much coding for our own billing system and our own support system that was built in-house that eventually we were busier to, by maintaining the system and um, supporting customers than by doing what we originally intended to do, which was building code for other people. So that's where WHMS comes, WHMCS comes to play. And there is a software, I don't know if you have heard about this, JWHMCS. It is not under bridges in the extensions, it is under the hosting aspect. Um, it is a commercial software. And this also explains what's the catch with the whole thing. Well, the catch is this system is closed source WHM CS. So how do you keep Joomla on the one hand run under the GPL compatible with WHM CS? This integration tool manages to have um, the code encrypted in WHMCS and it runs automatically or just in WHMCS. And on the other hand, it has the Joomla components which are unencrypted. So they talk to each other and they don't really violate the license of Joomla nor the license of WHMCS. Originally, it was planned to have um, a five minute video but the developers, I asked the developers of um, the JWHMCS if they would be able to make it, but they aren't. They're going to be ready today, they said, and they'll have it posted on their website, which is gohireis.com. I'll have it on, on the papers. But I have a short video. I hope that you can see it. And actually. The client portal is integrated. We're using the default uh, portal template. And now we're going to go to the initial site. We're first thing we're going to go to once we install the parameters. Uh, the parameters will show your license, uh, debug info, URL to Joomla site, URL to the images, or to SSL. The jQuery is also interesting because of 
the obvious implications of Joomla running new tools and then them running jQuery. And as you see, it is integrated completely into Joomla, including the design. I checked my email real quick because I'm still waiting for an email from WHMCS because I managed to get at least one um, development or no, actually one full license for the JWHMCS for one of the participants. We will have a little lottery. And um, for WHMCS, they also said that they would offer something, but they didn't tell me what exactly. And I emailed them the day before yesterday, and um, then yesterday someone told me, yeah, it'll probably be a freebie for one of the people, but um, the owner has to approve it, and he hasn't approved it yet. So um, I would suggest that you, if you are interested, then just email me, and um, I hope to, to get something for you for that. Um, as far as the JWHMCS goes, you only saw the installation and the basic um, um, menu integration. 
then it's not what they promised me to, to have ready today. But um, once again, you can actually download WHMCS for free for, and, have, and try it for 30 days and then decide what to do with that. And um, I believe um, even JWHMCS is also still available for a trial. So you can look into that as well. But that's not all that um, I want to get as a result of this session. I would like to look further into integrations. So I have prepared three groups. And um, one of them is on a forum integration. And um, the other one is on Magento. And last but not least, it's, or, it, it's WordPress. I guess we can, um, or my idea is that you all, or that two people sit together, look at the, the options or the, the pros and cons. I have written a couple of questions which you don't have to answer. It's just a couple of suggestions for your discussion. And I would like you to prepare a little paper that we can present and then you can tell us what do you think about this integration. Okay, so who is interested in the forum? Anyone interested in joining him? You too? Okay, so then you might actually already know about these projects if you have integrated things before. Then we have Magento. And WordPress. You can find the questions at the very end of the paper. Uh, what I can say is uh, I've uh, read about diffusion and uh, lots of tools, but I've never used them. Uh, so, so I don't know what uh, the benefits and advantages are uh, for the cons. Uh, so I can't tell about that. Uh, I think the approach could be more generic, uh, generally. Uh, maybe the people uh, having uh, a rich <laughs> as a topic uh, would uh, tell us a little bit more about it. Uh, is to talk with, with the external application using HTTP and simulate the user over for that system and uh, just evaluate the output and uh, using uh, uh, IDs of, of divs or, or, or uh, parts of the output uh, to take the output apart and assign uh, parts of it to modules and to the feed, the main parts to the content and view it in Joomla later. So then you would have basically like an interface based on XML, for example, or? On, on HTTP, HTTP. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, right, you said HTTP, I'm yeah. To, to the external uh, application, just like a user would do. Mm -hmm. I'm making a post and, 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 and get requests and evaluating the output. Okay. So you can like screen scrape it. Yeah. And that works fine. I've, I've done that for, for, for a couple of sites uh, with very special uh, things on the other side, uh, and it works perfectly. Okay. So, who's next? Yeah, uh, we had here a WordPress and new blog for Joomla, and what basically is a WordPress integration into Joomla, my understanding, I don't know it, so uh, was a lot of, uh, a lot of heavy guessing. 
guessing here. It doesn't matter. First of all, we, we generally discuss does it make sense at all? I mean, that's a question that's very old at, at all to integrate WordPress as such into Joomla, have it as functionality, because there are so many blogs that are out there. Uh, Joomla alone. Uh, you said for a blog you would always use WordPress because it's a nicer blogging system. So uh, kind of strange and we uh, the thing we, we, we discussed the most uh, is was user synchronization. Because there are so many uh, components out there, so many uh, bridges that claim to synchronize the users. And I'm not honestly I'm not sure if they always synchronize what they understand as synchronization or is it just a one time copy. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, synchronization is, is not the complete deal. I would like to have a replication, you know? And what you say here somewhere, it says... Um, I believe Jay Fusion says that they have a two-way synchronization. They have a two-way, they have a two-way. But not for WordPress. Says, we'll sync the WordPress user every time he loads the component to make sure all of the user's information is accurate. That's, that's uh, a snapshot. You take a snapshot and mm -hmm. you load the component when you, when you uh, show, the, uh, show the content. Um, I'm not sure whether or not it's validated, um, and so on and so forth. So that was that was one of the things. Then we then we uh, had a question mark uh, had password synchronization. Um, how do you allow this access to this to, to all the other user things? Uh, you said the passwords are um, yeah different and, and, and uh, protected differently. And then we we couldn't ask the question with the uh, comments with the comments function. Do you allow anonymous comments? Do you have to log in? In what system? With what user ID? Uh, and so on. And we we got a little bit stuck there. So uh, was difficult to say the least. Uh, this is it. I mean, I have not seen a good user synchronization running. Honestly, it was always. I have not looked into so many, but I have not seen a good one running. Uh, they always kind of download. Mm. You know. Way synchronization, I'm sure, is is a is a tricky thing uh, because then you then you end up in this duplicate handling. Uh, what if you know? Especially with the WHMCS, it's pretty interesting because they used to have clear text passwords stored in the database. And and now they offer either or, but. Um, it's still not compatible with, quite compatible with Joomla. Quite and then, a nice <laughs> <laughs> and then I really wonder how it's going to be dealt with once Joomla goes to 1.6 and has the new ACL, how fast the other integrations keep up with that. And this is going to be a big problem if anyone uses one of these integrations. Yeah. The HTTP solution does not have problems with that because Joomla has control. Mm -hmm. Everything. One of the, those has to be in control, that's right. Yeah. That was one of the questions we had here. Who is client, who is server, who is master, who is slave? Who is in control? We integrated. We integrated. Make Joomla, uh, integration, then Joomla must be the client. And uh, the foreign software has to, serve as a, uh, has to be a server yeah. and to provide services and nothing else. Um, we integrated Joomla, PHPBB, and WHMCS, and it's a complete mess. That one of those applications upgrades, then you'll have the, to worry about the other applications. When are they going to keep up with that? And it's not really easy. Yeah. So is it just uh, the, the password problem? Is that the, the sort of the crucial problem in this? Is the reason why you really have to have this? Uh, password and ACL, I would say. Right. If another system is more sophisticated with the ACL, like I believe um, the bulletin, it's pretty sophisticated. Um, As in, like more granular in the, in the permissions or something like that. Yeah. So, what you, did you find out about Magento? Uh, we, we looked at Magento and uh, bridging that. Uh, neither of us had any experience with uh, uh, bridging these things together before. Uh, I've, I've done more, been sort of mildly involved with, uh, with one, one Magento site. Well, with JFusion, you only synchronize the user login pretty much. 
but with um, the bridge. Have you talked to the people behind the bridge, the Magento bridge for Joomla? Yeah, but what's the start of the next bridge? Where it goes way beyond that because it, it offers Joomla modules and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but the data come from Magento mm -hmm. and I yeah. extract it from, from the output. That's the way I, I explain. Yeah, you can use any. So even the those features from the professional or the driver, I can integrate with Joomla somehow with the entire branch. I don't know what's what's extra mm -hmm. professional with it, but yeah. So are you interested in getting a free car? I only have one. Um, is any of you seriously interested? Don't or should we yes. sorry? Yeah. It's like a web hosting management. Yeah, well, map hosting or client management, I would say. Yeah. I would if it was, if it was open. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the free license and no interested users? <laughs> <laughs> we have. <laughs> so what's involved in I'm interested? Uh, Sorry? What does it mean? If I'm inter interested, I will. You will get the free license. Are we st are we recording this? We should. I, I, I was supposed to have a drawing for that lottery, but I mean, if only one is really interested, then. Then you have it. Okay. Then just email me, and then I'll hook you up with them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.